There have been some times when things were distressing or even intense, but here are some examples of when things got really awful on Hell's Kitchen. Like this time right here, when one contestant's goofiness backfired like never before. What exactly happened, you ask? Well, his first day turned out to be his last. The chef I'm talking about, of course, is Sebastian Royo, who was the first Mexican contestant to be on the show. But guess what? He was the first to leave the show in season 11. Which makes me wonder, if he did spend more time in the competition, do you think he would have improved his skills? Well, one Reddit user doesn't seem to have that much hope in him, and I feel the same way. I think if not for the very first service, this man was going to be down in the next one anyway. I mean, do you remember his signature dish? First off, he didn't even want to present it to Chef Ramsay. And when he did, the famous chef couldn't even find the main component of the dish, the shrimps. Chef Ramsay was so confused, he even asked Nedra Harris to taste the dish for him, and this is how she reacted. What do you think? Okay, oh, oh, no, oh, no. Gosh, that must have been really awful then. And people say Chef Ramsay overreacts. If anything, I think Ramsay actually downplays some of the most horrendous dishes that he's tasted over the years. It probably would have been better if Sebastian just didn't present his dish. But since this wasn't the elimination round, he managed to scrape through into the first service. There, he was placed at the appetizer station along with John Scallion. Now, you know how John is. I mean, this chef de cuisine from Pennsylvania finished things off in third place, so Sebastian was no match for him. Instead, what he was, was a big letdown. Just think about it, when your very first risotto comes out undercooked, it's not a good sign. And that's what happened in Sebastian's case. The service had just begun, and thanks to him, the blue team had to start from scratch all over again. But what do you know, his refire actually got accepted. But before that could even sink in, Sebastian screwed up yet again. It looks like he was just here to torture Chef Ramsay's taste buds. I mean, why else do you think he would present something like this? It's too spicy and it's disgusting. And things only started to go downhill from here. Sebastian thought it would be okay to goof around in the kitchen. Did he think Hell's Kitchen was a joke? I mean, just take a look at how he addressed Michael Langdon when the latter tried to give him a pep talk. Come on guys, let's go. Okay, Mikey Wikey. Dude, this is some serious business, not some sort of picnic where you can just sit back and relax. Michael luckily didn't react much, but you can't expect the same from everyone else. Sometime later, when Sebastian was trying to communicate with Zach Womack, once again, he tried to show his goofy side. Chef Ramsay was already annoyed with the delayed service, but in the midst of it all, he heard Sebastian say this. We got, uh, Talk to me. Jackie Wacky. Well, that's how you ask for trouble. And well, at this point, it doesn't even matter if Zach heard it or not, because Chef Ramsay wasn't having any of it. Zachy Wacky. Chef Zach. Hey, look at me. Hey, look at me. Is this a Joke. No, chef. However, Chef Ramsay didn't stop at that. He was over and done with having this clown in the kitchen, so without giving it a second thought, he asked them to get out. But what did Sebastian do? He tried to sneak right back into the kitchen, but how do you think Chef Ramsay would react to that? Well, it went just like you think it would. Second time, get out! Fuck off, wacky! Had he been any wiser, Sebastian would have never thought of stepping back into the kitchen again. But that's exactly what he did. And this time, he wasn't the only one who got kicked out. For the last time, take him and him, get out! Though Sebastian failed to make it to the Hell's Kitchen Hall of Fame, he definitely got fame in the world of memes. One user even wrote about the possibility of Sebastian coming back and calling Chef Ramsay Chefy Weffy had he not been eliminated in time. But this next contestant from season 10, who charmed many viewers with his good looks, cracked up a few with his sense of humor. However, there were also those who were left cringing. One of them being Chef Ramsay. I'm talking about a personal chef from Chicago named Brian Merrill. Now, Brian was a decent chef, but with every episode that passed, his performance took a hit. One Reddit user mentioned how Brian came across as someone who didn't function very well under stress. It's in these stressful times when he would crack up and lose all control over his mouth. Sometimes, I wonder how Chef Ramsay even tolerated him in the kitchen for as long as he did. But like I said earlier, some viewers found him really entertaining. Well, in hindsight, at least Brian brought some life into the season, right? Because, well, I thought that season 10 was so full of toxicity, don't you think? There was hardly any bonding between teammates, especially when it came to the red team. However, sometimes Brian forgot that there was a time and place to crack jokes. Just like this time during the fourth dinner service when Brian was working at the fish station with Patrick Casada. 
Even though he made a mistake while handling the appetizers, Brian wanted to redeem himself during the entrees. But it didn't exactly work out in his favor. The cod he sent to the pass was raw, and this left Chef Ramsay dismayed. The cod is raw. Fucking cat food. Fuck off, will you? But that was nothing since a bigger blow was yet to come. When Chef Ramsay told Justin Antiorio to go over to the fish station, he discovered that the refire was burnt. I think Brian was actually lucky here because even though Chef Ramsay saw it, he just showed his disappointment and didn't actually kick him out. Even sous chef Scott didn't yell at him for wasting food. Maybe both of them just had given up. Burnt the goddamn fish. Oh my god. But instead of counting his blessings, Brian ended up burning so many cods that he ran out of them. Hell's Kitchen suddenly turned into a horror kitchen. Are you? What in the fuck are you doing? Despite that, Brian continued to work in the kitchen. However, eventually, he finally did something that got him kicked out. Since the kitchen had run out of cod, they came up with a quick solution to replace it with sea bass. And when Chef Ramsay called out the first ticket for it, everyone replied with a loud, yes chef. But what did Brian decide to do? You have to see this to believe it. Too loud. Yes chef, coming right now, baby. The audacity this man had is crazy. I mean, what was he even expecting, huh? I don't think he realized that Ramsay was just ignoring his mistakes this entire time, but not anymore. Because, well, before he could even take his next breath, all hell broke loose. You cook like a fucking baby. What happened again, chef? Get out! And just like how the sea bass replaced the cod, Justin replaced Brian. I think Brian thought he was in the Super Bowl or something. A Reddit user even pointed out how Brian was a goofball who couldn't help but have fun. What followed was a lot of discussion whether Brian was overrated or not. Some viewers praised him for his personality and cooking skills, while on the other hand, there were those who were fed up with his inconsistent performances. I personally would have liked him if he didn't run his mouth as much as he did. But what's your take on this? Do you think he was overrated? Well, I can't deny that Brian did try to fool around. But this next contestant from season 9 made a fool of herself. That, madam, is not veal. Oh no. And what's worse, she chose the wrong time and service to display her foolishness. If you ask me, although the signature dish wasn't all that great, I think Krupa Patel had a good start to the season. But somewhere down the line, her performance plummeted to the ground. It was actually astonishing to see Krupa fall so hard, especially after she gave three consecutive good services. There was also a time when I thought she could go all the way up to the black jacket round. But when she fell, she never got back up. In the fifth episode during the fire and water challenge, at the time of cooking, Krupa wanted to use the guinea hen. But since Gina Melcher had already picked it, Krupa snatched the veal instead. I chose veal. I was very angry about that. How, Krupa? How? How could you not understand that this wasn't veal? And I'm so surprised that nobody from her team told her that it wasn't veal. It was literally right there in front of their eyes. When the time came for judging, Krupa was the last person to have her dish judged by the famous chef. Ultimately, she went up against Natalie Blake. While the dish didn't have any visual appeal, the guest judges actually loved the flavors of it. And so did Chef Ramsay. It actually tastes quite nice. I mean, it's, it's, it's delicious. But it was now time for her to know the truth, and it was Chef Ramsay who did the honors. That, madam, is not veal. That's filet mignon. Though Krupa claimed that she knew the difference, we could clearly see that she didn't. If she did, she would have corrected herself even before the prep time. And how could you explain her reaction when Chef Ramsay revealed the truth? Nobody could fake that unless they got an Oscar. This was an unthinkable blunder. I don't even think home cooks could be this ignorant. It was embarrassing for Chef Ramsay to see his team serving the wrong meat to the esteemed guests. Chef Ramsay wasn't only disappointed with Krupa, but also with the team for not noticing her mistake. The view was right there, how could nobody see it? I couldn't tell you how mad Ramsay actually was. Throughout the whole 45 minutes, no one noticed it wasn't being used. And in front of my guests, how dare you? A Reddit user pointed out two reasons why the red team was deemed a loser by Chef Ramsay. For one, they didn't inform Krupa about the veal being filet mignon. And secondly, they sidelined Carrie's dish because of a personal vendetta against her. Well, that's not how teams work. And when you don't work as a team, you lose. But this next contestant, who claimed to be a stay-at-home mom and the author of a cookbook, got a bit too up close and personal with the famous chef. And when I say this, I mean it. This woman was here to steal Gordon away from Miss Ramsay. But would her scheming plan be successful? In the seventh season, one particular contestant happened to catch Chef Ramsay's attention. During the signature dish challenge, when this contestant first revealed her veal scapolini, Chef Ramsay wasn't really impressed with the presentation. 
Apart from it looking like baby vomit, what is that? But when he tasted it, it knocked Chef Ramsay's socks off. It may look slightly dull and boring, a little bit like you, but well done. While no one in the show's history got a hug from Ramsay during the signature dish challenge, this lady became the first. Left, right, relax. Relax, relax, relax. Chef Ramsay had a great start and was so happy that he even gave her a kiss on the cheek. But then something shocking happened. That was fucking amazing. You could just feel the passion being ignited there. That day, there was a totally different kind of fire blazing in Hell's Kitchen. But what in the world was happening here? You could see all the contestants' jaws drop on the floor, and as for me, I was at an absolute loss for words, and let me tell you, that rarely ever happens. For a second, I thought I was watching another show like Too Hot to Handle or something, because this has never happened in the history of the show. But as you know, Chef Ramsay is full of surprises. And this surprise was actually more of a shock than a surprise. The whole scene that you just saw was staged by Chef Ramsay to prove a point. A rather crucial point, might I add. But before I explain that, let's take a look at who was behind the disguise. This person is not who you think she is. Tana, huh? say that off. For those of you who don't know, this woman in disguise was actually Miss Ramsay. Tana Ramsay obliged to go undercover to help her husband make a point to the aspiring contestants of the show. Speaking of which, this is the point Chef Ramsay wanted to make. What I do care about is who has the magic, who has it? Now that the famous chef made his point, this is what I think. What was the point of this actually? To make us single people feel uncomfortable? Well, he could have definitely done this differently. I mean, all that PDA wasn't really necessary now, was it? Well, I guess Chef Ramsay was just trying to show us that he's the man. But let's not forget that as a result, there were a bunch of uneasy contestants who didn't know what to do or even where to look. But apart from that, I think this was utterly unnecessary. In fact, I came across a post about Chef Ramsay's worst moment, and one of the users hated how he involved his wife in the signature dish challenge. As for the involvement of Tana Ramsay, it was okay, but then what happened next was kind of cringy. I mean, at first, I thought, how could you do this to a contestant? But wait, why even would you do that? And I think the last thing I want to see on Hell's Kitchen is Gordon snogging on his disguised wife on camera. There are tricks and then there are pranks and well, this one was just a bad joke. What do you guys think? What would you call this stunt of Chef Ramsay's? I'd love to know your thoughts. Meanwhile, this next contestant who had a great time making fun of the red team was a real douchebag. But there's something he did that made him the laughing stock. Meet Andrew Pierce from season 16. In a Reddit post about moments that are hard to watch, a user mentioned about the time when Andrew and Johnny McDevitt made fun of Kimberly Roth and called her a rat face. That's mean as hell. I mean, Andrew was seriously arrogant though. If only that confidence was reflected into his cooking, he would have been a better chef and a better person. What he actually was, was a mediocre cook who only knew how to piss people off. Most times what happens on Hell's Kitchen stays on Hell's Kitchen. But this time, it had some serious repercussions beyond the limits of the set. What happened is, Andrew openly cheated on his fiance with Heather Williams, and here's the thing, Heather had no idea about it. We have seen chefs flirting openly, so when Andrew started flirting with Heather, we all went, oh. But then Andrew confessed to being engaged. All we're doing is laying next to each other. I get married in a couple months, so it's probably not going to be a strong relationship. How could you flirt knowing that you were engaged? I mean, every time he flirted with Heather, it just didn't feel right. I even give you the bigger piece. You guys are such lovebirds. But did Heather ever come to know that Andrew was engaged? Of course, and when she did, Heather had the shock of her life. Before the Black Jacket challenges, everyone's families usually visit, and you probably know who visited Andrew. Yep, his fiance. Uh, Helen, and your girlfriend Leela. <laughs> that wasn't only a cringeworthy moment, but it was uncomfortable as hell. And it's good that Andrew didn't earn a Black Jacket. He didn't deserve it at all. When he came back for the final service, he was Heather's first pick. I thought maybe, just maybe, Andrew would stay within his limits, but nope, he continued to riz her up. A user summed up his feelings about Andrew's cheating like this. Isn't it so apt? Another user pointed out how he's so shameless knowing that his family would watch the show one day. On the other hand, this viewer was a fan of Andrew's until the cheating incident happened. And remember how I said this issue continued way after the show? Well, apparently, Heather received several death threats because of the flirting situation, although she had no idea about Andrew's fiancé. According to another Reddit user, Heather, in an interview, said that Andrew broke things off with his fiancé to be with Heather. 
But Heather rejected him and never spoke to him again. All in all, Andrew was a really disgusting person. So to sum things up, he was flirting with Heather while engaged with his girlfriend, and then broke things off with her to be with Heather. And when he came back, Heather might have considered him, but he was already with another woman. What was he looking for? Polygamy? But guess what? Andrew is now married and his wife's name is Christy. They work at the business they created together, and given his history with women, I really hope he stays loyal in his marriage. Now, remember, if there are any updates you guys have on the things I discuss on this channel, don't forget to fill me in. After all, there's a ton of joy in sharing, right? Even if it's gossip. So, these were the worst moments on Hell's Kitchen. But who knows, there may be times when Chef Ramsay not only wants to leave the kitchen, but also the show in the future.